Hello and welcome back to my channel. The channel where I've built my own DIY supercar and this is the prototype using an old Audi estate as a donor car. Now on this episode we're going to cover how I made this roof and we'll also discuss the second donor car I had to get to steal the roof from. Now, designing and building this roof was quite complicated and it wasn't all done in one process. I know I'm making a series of videos for you showing you how I built this car one episode after another, but that's not how you actually build a kit car or develop a supercar or anything like that. So you have to do it in certain stages. I can't cover all of this in one episode. So in this episode, we'll cover the basic roof and the donor car that I got this roof from. And then in a later episode, I'll go into more detail on how I finished this roof. It'll all make sense in the future, but for now, this is basically stage one of building this roof. Now, if you're thinking about building and designing your own supercar, you're going to have to source parts from other vehicles to complete your build. There's certain things that are just too complicated and too expensive to do yourself and one of them is have the windscreen made. Let's take a look at how a genuine OEM windscreen is manufactured. After receiving the glass material at the production facility, workers select the proper form according to the plan. All parameters, color and size are described in a technical task. The glass is unloaded by an overhead crane. This is the cutting and fracture section where the glass processing begins. The glass is cut by automated machines according to the target program. The glass processing continues on a special cutting table where the material will be cut into parts. After the brake process, models are formed in pyramids according to the model range. The next stage of production is contour processing or facet. This is done both manually and with the help of computer number control machines. A diamond tool is used for processing the contour. The windshield consists of two parts. PVB material, polyvinyl butyrol film, is laid between them. The thickness of the windshield is about two and a half centimeters. There is glass of different segmentation with cutouts and several holes. The glass is prepared for painting after it is checked for scratches, defects, and chips. Later, the glass is put into four different furnaces. They are a small-sized and large-sized windshield, which have a single-bend radius and a double-bend radius, respectively. In accordance with the technical draft and the arc, line workers form the glass and send it into a heated furnace. There it is heated and cooled and hardened. This ensures that the glass has high strength and resistance to impact. At the final stage, the glass is modified in accordance with the customer's order, molding, contacts, sensors, and fastening. Now, if you're thinking you don't want to use a windscreen, you'll just use a piece of plastic or something instead, there's a bit of a problem because if you plan on putting your DIY supercar on the road, it will need one of these. And that is a British standard mark to say that this windscreen is road legal. Now depending on your country, these marks will mean different things. In short, you just can't use a piece of plastic as your windscreen. It will not be allowed on the road. Now you could have your own custom windscreen made. 
if you've got a spare £10,000 plus to spend to have someone do it for you. But if you're trying to develop a budget DIY kit car supercar, then a £10,000 plus windscreen is just too expensive. Then there's other areas that you've got to consider. A modern windscreen today is laminated and also it has this black transfer border all the way around because these windscreens are bonded into the bodywork. Furthermore, you have OEM trim pieces that hide all the gaps. So you've got to sort of figure out how to do that and make the overall car look OEM and factory and not some DIY sloppy job. So your only option left is to get a windscreen from another car. Now you could just get the glass and then build your car to match the windscreen, a little bit like this. Now fitting the windshield became something that we needed to uh, cut away against more of the plaster work here. And then we're gonna fill around the windshield. Once it was set in place, I just take plaster mixed up and take a grout bag you can find at a Mason resupply store or a big box supply store, they might have one. And you're just gonna inject the plaster right around the windshield and this windshield came is out of a Chevy Cavalier and it comes with a rubber gasket seal around it so the plaster being injected around it fits exactly to that rubber seal making it so we don't have to create some special technique to carve a gap for our windshield we actually form around the windshield itself the windshield comes out and then I've cut away a couple of ribs and created the dashboard. And you can see this fine groove there where the windshield gasket's gonna fit. But what's gonna happen is I'm going to take the next step, I'm gonna build the hood, is gonna go over the top of the windshield itself. Now that's a great channel if you're into self-built DIY supercars, and it's worth checking out and subscribing if you haven't already. Anyway, I decided to not go in that direction because I was thinking a little bit long term and I wanted to consider maybe one day this could be a DOI kit. And there's other areas that I had to develop and design. One is the weather stripping here and the side glass. So I thought it might be easier just to take an entire roof from a car and modify that to fit my chassis. And that's what I did. Now, if you've been following along, then you will know that the main donor car for this project is an Audi A6. Now, I can't really take the roof and the windscreen and the side glass from an Audi A6 because I don't think it's going to fit the flowing lines of this, this supercar. So, I had to get a second donor car. My first choice was a 7th generation Toyota Celica like this one. I want to thank Neil for bringing down his 2001 7th generation Toyota Celica BVTLI. Now for those of you viewing in the States, I believe this is what they called the GTS. And the important thing here is that it has the 190 horsepower 2ZZ motor, which is exactly the same engine that I used to have in my Elise 111R. But there was a problem with this idea. That roof had already been used by an existing supercar. Now, if I can pronounce this correctly, I believe it's called the Plethor LC750. Ryan Little. <laughs>
the roof from a 7th gen Toyota Celica had already been done. Here's a picture of a Toyota Celica and here's a picture of the LC750. Do you see the resemblance? Anyway, that Toyota was off the card so I thought I won't use that and then a friend of mine suggested that I take a look at the next donor car that I'm going to talk about in a second and that is the Ford Cougar. Here's a picture of the actual donor car that I paid £300 for. The head gasket had failed so the car was pretty much written off. So what I had to do was move the prototype chassis from my garage and move it to the front of my patio doors. Now at this stage of the build, I didn't have this workshop here, all I had was my garage and a shed. And I was currently building a carport, but it wasn't quite finished. So anyway, the chassis had to live there for a few weeks with a plastic cover over the top of it. And then I could begin on stripping down this donor car. So, remove the bonnet, the wings, interior, that sort of stuff, pulled out the windscreen and all of that. Uh, I just basically, basically dumped everything into the car. A lot of this was sold, like the leather interior was sold, the dashboard was sold, uh, airbags, that sort of stuff. Yeah, here we go, there's a picture of the interior of the car with the dashboard removed. That was sold, along with the clocks and all that sort of stuff as well. Now I've cut the roof off at this stage and I've got it strapped to, I made a wooden jig and I used some uh, seat belts just to support the roof so that I could lift it off the car. Here's another angle, I'm just trying to get the balance right so that the roof was pretty much level so it could be lifted off the car. Here's a close up shot of that. And here's another angle from the bulkhead area. Just cut this off with an angle grinder. Now, once the uh, roof had been chopped off, I had to push the car, or what was left of it, out of the garage so that I could chop that up and scrap that. Now, at this stage in the game, I had managed to finish my carport and I could the, the roof was on the carport, so then I moved the chassis into the carport and then the Cougar chassis ended up on my patio, which then I chopped up. A lot of moving things around, it's, you know, I'm, I'm tight for space here. And here's a, here's a picture of the, uh, the chassis, what was left of it, all chopped up, all this got weighed in for scrap. And there's a picture of the roof, just supported, ready for me to wheel the chassis back in so that I could start the fitment of the roof. Here's a close-up shot of the roof, ready for fitment. And I think that's it. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with borrowing a roof from another existing car. After all, other supercar builders out there have been borrowing parts from other mainstream manufacturers for years. You know, headlights, rear tail lights, switch gear, all that sort of stuff is usually borrowed from other manufacturers. Now, regarding the styling of my car, I got a request from one of my subscribers and asking if I would put an image of my chassis up on the screen so they could do a screen grab and then they could do a 3D rendering of their own design over the top of my chassis, which I think is an absolutely fantastic idea. And that is really getting behind the idea of this car because it is designed to be modular so you can change the styling depending on your own preference. Now, the thing is, is I don't actually have any 3D renderings of my chassis. I do have a whole load of um, technical drawings, if you like, that I made while developing this chassis. And when I say a load of them, I mean a load of them. So, on my list of things to do, I do plan on actually taking all those images and try and make it into some sort of 3D graphic model, if you like, of the chassis one day. I don't know whenever I will do that. 
but I'd like to do it one day. So I thought what I would do if, if there's anyone out there and you would like images of my chassis, um, some photographs, I will put an email address here, okay? If you want to email me, I will email you all the images that I've took. There'll be photographs of my chassis, and then if you want to design your own car over the top of my chassis, feel free, okay? Or, in the next scene, um, I will be putting some pictures up on the screen of my chassis, and feel free, take a screen, grab, and do what you like. And whatever you come up with, send it to me, I'd like to see. Now, because I didn't have much space, and I didn't have a large workshop at the time, I couldn't buy both donor cars at the same time. So I had to buy the Audi donor car, strip it, then I had to develop the chassis, and then when the chassis was almost finished, get the second donor car, which was the Ford Cougar. So I had to be absolutely sure I got my measurements right, and I didn't know this until the moment I actually put the roof onto the chassis which is this picture here. And then it all lined up. Phew! It lined up with the Audi dashboard, it lined up with the chassis points that I put in place and everything perfectly. And I thought, wow, I've got all my measurements right. So, oh, this roof, by the way, is intended to be modular. The whole kit is supposed to be modular. So you, you, if you had my chassis, you don't have to have a Ford Cougar roof, you might be able to find another roof from another car and that would probably fit on with some modifications. And you might also notice that there's no roll cage yet on this chassis. There will be, it is intended to have a roll cage, but obviously I couldn't finish the roll cage until I finished the roof, because obviously the roll cage has to match the roof line. So here's another picture of the roof and it all fits. This is very rough and crude fitment. Uh, just another picture again. Now, while I was developing this roof, I had a ratchet, um, you know, a chain, and I had to lift the roof up, you know, cut a little bit away, angle grinder, put it back down, nibble away at it. This, this was like a yo-yo. This roof went up and down, up and down, until I got the roof perfect. Right, this is a side-on view, which some of you out there might want to do a photo, grab the screen if you like, and then you can design your own car over the top of it if you like. If not, like I say, send me an email and I'll send you a load of photos. Now, I really like this. From this, this me, I, I like this. So, I thought I've got all the lines right, the roof fitted perfectly, all my measurements fitted, and on that day was a highlight of this build. I thought, I've cracked it. Uh, here's another angle. So we're just looking at a slightly different angle. Everything lines up perfectly. The dashboard fitted. So that's an Audi dashboard fitting in there with a Ford Kruger roof. All fits. Here's another angle. Um, you might notice I was also trying to develop the windscreen wiper, which we will cover in another episode. But this was all lining up pretty spot on. Here's another close up. You can see a very rough mock up of a prototype wiper, windscreen wiper I was, I was messing with. And this is a sneak peek, okay? This is another side view, and this is where I was putting the lines of the car in place. Now, I've already begun some of the woodwork here, which I will cover in another episode, right? This is why this roof is in two stages, right? I could, I could get the roof, I chopped it, I put the roof on and I got it as central as I could. But before I could continue with the rest of the bodywork, I needed more datums on the car so I could check that this, the roof was absolutely central. So this is one of the reasons I stopped developing the roof at that stage and then I had to do the side pods. That was the next job. Uh, another shot, just a slightly closer view of it. And here's a side view of it. So you can start to see, I've got the roof there, very rough cut roof. You can see the fuel tank. You can see how the fuel tank is really in board into the chassis now, um, which is what it was designed to be. And you can start seeing some of the woodwork that I was putting in, which also became datums later on in the design, so I could line the roof up with the sides of the car. And here's another view of the side 
and you can see a little bit of black tape I was just messing with this line here so you know I was just seeing what is the best angle so that's what that black tape was there just lining it up for the design and this is just a rear part of the car this is the rear part of the roof you can see the pods that I was making where the fuel tanks are those pods helped me centralize the roof but we'll go into that in another episode later on and I think that's it I think I've covered everything so this is stage one of the roof and we will go into stage two of finishing the roof in another episode and it all makes sense trust me so I couldn't cut the rear part of the roof off and then build this rear section until I had made the side pods because I needed the datums and I also had to develop the mechanical parts of these doors so that had to be done and we'll cover those in another episode so don't worry about that now another thing about using a roof from a, an existing car is it should help with insurance because the windscreen on this is from a Ford Cougar so if it ever cracks you just phone up and say can you fit a Ford Cougar windscreen onto this and it's an easy job it's relatively cheap so that should help with insurance, that should help with the build. So when you're building the car, you don't even have to fit the windscreen yourself. You just get a professional to do it for you. It might only cost you £100 or £200 or something like that. It's easy. So I think that will do for now. I think I've covered everything. Um, if, you, if you want some photos of my chassis, because you want to design your own car over the top, drop me an email and I'll send them to you. So until then, bye for now. No, not quite finished. I've just noticed I'm about 50 subscribers away from hitting 2,000. So click that subscribe button down there. See if you can get me over 2,000 subscribers before Christmas. Well, maybe not, maybe in the new year. But anyway, bye for now and see you in the new year. Oh, and have a good Christmas and go out, enjoy yourself, and don't listen to these stupid politicians, alright? So bye.